When I opened the front door, I saw women's and children's shoes. As I was taking off my shoes, I heard a playful laughter. We immediately headed to the bathroom. When I opened the door, I saw Michael, Stephanie, and a two-year-old boy soaking in the tub. What are you guys doing? When I asked, Michael looked at me in surprise and twisted his mouth into a grin. Oh, you're still alive, huh? I'm divorcing you. He declared loudly, and Stephanie, my younger sister, giggled. A long time no see, Yasmin. Sorry, but Michael's mine now. Divorce? You have no idea. My father appeared beside me and spoke to the two of them. He began to reveal one truth after another. No way. Finally, Michael collapsed and broke down in tears. My name is Yasmin Keller, a 28-year-old housewife. My husband Michael, who is a year older than me, and I have been together since college. Luckily, Michael's parents, who live a bit farther away, adore me, and we get along well. This year marks our fourth year of marriage. We finally received our long-awaited blessing of a baby. Michael and his parents were overjoyed. When I called my own parents, they were thrilled too. Congratulations. You're going to be a mom now. Thank you, mom. I had terrible morning sickness, so you might have it bad too. Yeah, but I can handle it for the baby. Hey, hold on. Your dad is fidgeting next to me. I'll pass the phone to him. Congratulations, Yasmin. Thank you, dad. It's your first grandchild. Oh, I can't wait to hold the baby. How are things over there? Everything okay? Well, we've had some trouble with our vegetables being stolen from the fields lately. My family runs a vegetable farm. They grow dozens of types of organic vegetables and sell them nationwide through mail order. What? That's terrible. Yeah. We're currently replacing the fences and barriers. I see. But don't worry, Yasmin. Just focus on having a healthy baby. Okay. My dad gently laughed. Though my dad laughed, having vegetables stolen is a serious problem for a farm. After the call, I talked to Michael about it. Vegetable thieves. Huh? I didn't know that happened in the countryside. He said, fiddling with his smartphone, showing no interest at all. It's a serious problem since it's our livelihood. We need to come up with some countermeasures. Yeah, I guess. No matter how much I explained, he talked as if it was someone else's problem. I let out a big sigh as Michael listened absentmindedly. I was worried about my family. But as my dad said, my current job was to give birth to a healthy baby. I tried to spend each day as peacefully as possible. Fortunately, my morning sickness was relatively mild, and I safely reached my fourth month of pregnancy. Yes, everything is progressing well. I think it's probably a girl. Wow, a girl. I was impressed during the prenatal checkup as the doctor showed me the ultrasound and said, you can tell this early. If it's a girl, these clothes would be cute. When her hair grows longer, I want to give her pigtails. Even after returning from the hospital, I imagined these things and stroked my belly, saying, be born healthy. But the moment I told Michael when he came home from work, my happiness was shattered. What? A girl? I could tell the atmosphere changed instantly. Tisk, a girl. My parents were so happy thinking it'd be a boy to carry on the family name. Well, but even if it's a girl, she's still our precious child, right? Yeah, but I'm disappointed. He sighed heavily and muttered, Oh well. When we found out I was pregnant, 
Michael was overjoyed and had been helping with housework and shopping, being very considerate. But from that day on, his attitude changed drastically. His disappointment turned into anger, and he began to treat me harshly. Hey, could you help with the housework a bit more? What? I'm tired from work too. Yasmin, you're at home all day. You should have plenty of time to do it slowly. My belly is getting bigger, and it's hard to clean the bathroom. If it's that hard, why don't you just get an abortion? I was shocked by Michael's twisted smile as he said that. Why would you say something like that? Because if it's a girl, she might end up running off with a man like your sister did. What does that mean? My clenched fist trembled. I have a sister named Stephanie who is two years younger than me. Stephanie had an affair with a married man when she was in college and ran away with him. She is still missing to this day. If our daughter did something like that, I'd demand all the money we spent raising her back. After all, she ended up dropping out of college, right? Being insulted about my family, I felt a strong sense of disgust towards Michael for the first time. Just when I was beginning to regret marrying him, I received a message from a high school friend. Hey, isn't this girl your sister? When I saw the photos sent to my smartphone, I was shocked and my eyes widened. Sure enough, the girl in the photo was my sister, Stephanie. But what surprised me more was that the person walking arm in arm with her taken from behind was Michael. My high school friend knew Stephanie was missing but didn't know about Michael, whom I met in college. That's why she sent it to me without realizing anything. Despite my turmoil, I hired a detective to thoroughly investigate Michael and Stephanie. Trying to find some evidence, I searched through Michael's bag while he was taking a shower. I see. So that's how it is. What I found was a completed divorce paper with his signature. Though my body trembled with anger, I took deep breaths to calm myself down, knowing I couldn't let it affect the baby inside me. Everything will be after the baby is born. I decided to get divorced after giving birth and took the divorce papers out of Michael's bag before closing it. In the eighth month of my pregnancy, I pretended to be unaware and told Michael, Hey, since this is my first childbirth, I'd like to go back to my parents' house to give birth. Um, I think that's fine. Michael, who had no interest in me or the baby anymore, agreed as if it was someone else's problem. Have a safe trip to your parents' house. His words lacked any sincerity. But I pretended not to notice and told my parents I wanted to return home for childbirth. Of course, Michael didn't offer to drive me, so I carried my heavy luggage in both hands and took the train to my parents' house. What? You came back alone. Where's Michael? My parents were surprised to see me return with my large belly and luggage. Well, he couldn't get off work. He sends his regards. Of course, this was a lie. When I left home, he was lying on the sofa playing with his smartphone and just waved without even looking at me. I hadn't told my parents about my plan to divorce yet. I didn't want to be mentally and physically exhausted by the divorce mess before giving birth. So I planned to keep it a secret until after the baby was born. Sorry for coming back at such a tough time with the vegetable thieves. What are you saying? We're happy to have you. Yes, just make sure to give birth to a healthy baby girl. My mother's words deepened the smile on my face. That's right. Neither my parents nor Michael's parents were disappointed to learn the baby would be a girl. The only one who was disappointed was Michael. That man, unfit to be a father, was the only one. Yasmin, look at this. My father showed me his phone screen with a delighted expression. It showed images of the farm and its surroundings, 
including the front entrance. What is this? I'm planning to catch the vegetable thieves by installing security cameras. That's great. I hope you catch the culprit. Yes, I'll hand them over to the police. While I was home, my father checked the footage daily. Seeing that, I thought, maybe I should have installed cameras at home too? But then I realized the detective had gathered enough evidence and there was no need to watch unpleasant footage. Despite several days passing since I returned, there was no contact from Michael. Although he read my messages, he never replied. My comfortable days at my parents' house flew by, and I safely gave birth to my baby. On the day of the birth, Michael's parents also came, and I was able to give birth with peace of mind. Yasmin, thank you so much for giving birth to a healthy baby. What a cute child. Thank you, Peter, Michelle. Thank you for coming all this way. Oh, it's nothing. It's for our lovely daughter-in-law and grandchild. Yasmin, you must be tired. Take some time to rest your body. Yes, thank you. But what is Michael doing at such an important time? Ah, uh, he has a lot of work. I told him not to push himself to come. I don't want him to get sick. I see. If that's the case. Please don't say anything to Michael. I don't want him to feel guilty. I said that to prevent his parents from contacting him. If they did, it would ruin my plans. A month after giving birth, it was time for the blessing ceremony for the baby. Michael's parents also came to celebrate and were happy to see the baby growing healthily. But of course, Michael did not come that day either. Both my parents and Michael's parents seemed to think it was strange. They kept glancing at me, waiting for the right moment to ask. I have something to tell you. When I said that, all four of them looked relieved and nodded. After returning home, I laid the baby in the crib and took a deep breath before speaking to my parents and Michael's parents. First, please look at this. We sat around the table in the living room and I placed the photos and investigation results from the detective in front of them. No way is this, Michael cheating? It can't be. What? Isn't this Stephanie? No, it can't be. How could they? They each exclaimed in shock, turning pale. Stephanie? Peter, who didn't know my sister's face, asked, and I told him she was my sister. Didn't you say your sister was missing? Yes. I don't know the details, but Michael and Stephanie met in college. So, they knew who each other was. They've been deceiving me for years. I showed them another photo. It showed Michael and Stephanie with a two-year-old boy. Michael was holding the boy and Stephanie had her arm around Michael. If you didn't know the situation, it would look like a happy family photo. I wanted to have a peaceful time until the baby was born, so I kept quiet until now. I apologized. My parents and Michael's parents exchanged looks and apologized to each other. No, it's really our son's fault. We're truly sorry. No, not at all. It's our foolish daughter who... To think she disappeared after ruining another family's life, only to now ruin her sister's family. Yasmin, it must have been so hard for you to handle all this alone during your pregnancy. I'm so sorry we couldn't be there for you during such a tough time. No, Michelle, thank you. I plan to divorce Michael. Everyone agreed with my decision. The next day, I submitted the divorce papers I had taken from Michael's bag, and we all decided to go to the house to discuss alimony and child support with Michael. Tomorrow, Dad will drive me back. I sent that message to Michael. As expected, he read it but didn't reply. I sighed, 
reminding myself that it would all end today, and went to sleep. The next morning, as we prepared to leave with Michael's parents and my mother, my father, who had been checking the security footage, called out loudly. Hey, look at this. What? What's wrong? What is it, Dad? Did you catch the vegetable thief? All of us, including Michael's parents, gathered to watch the footage. No way. This is... Should we call the police? But... We all exchanged glances in front of the footage. In the end, by the time we finished dealing with everything, it was evening when we returned to the house. When we opened the front door, we saw women's and children's shoes. Oh, well, we don't need to bother calling Stephanie out. I said, looking at my parents, who were furious. Of course, they would be. As I took off my shoes, I heard playful laughter. We silently headed towards the bathroom. When I opened the door, there was Michael, Stephanie, and the two-year-old boy in the bathtub. What are you doing? Michael looked at me in surprise, but then twisted his mouth into a smile. Oh, you're still alive, huh? I'm divorcing you. He declared loudly, and Stephanie giggled. Long time no see, Yasmin. Sorry, but Michael's mine now. Divorce? You have no idea. My father appeared beside me and spoke to the two of them. His voice was clearly angry different from the usual calm father I knew. But Stephanie, confident she would be accepted, smiled at our mother behind us. Look, mom and dad, unlike Yasmin, I gave birth to a boy. Stephanie, what are you talking about? My mother was already pale and couldn't find the words. Michael's parents will surely be happier with the grandchild I gave them. At that moment, my father's anger reached its peak. I could feel it too. But he took a deep breath, trying to control his anger. Put your clothes on and come outside. He told them that and closed the bathroom door. As we waited outside the entrance, Michael and Stephanie came out, laughing and playing with the child, as if they were enjoying the situation. When Michael saw my father's car parked in the driveway, he stopped in his tracks. What? Yasmin, didn't you come back by train? Oh, why? I told you yesterday that my dad would drive me. Well, yeah, but... Michael, flustered, exchanged a quick glance with Stephanie. Did you assume I came back by train because I got home safely? You said, oh, you're still alive, earlier. Oh no, I didn't say that. You must have misheard. At Michael's words, my father smiled, but his eyes were not smiling at all. Recently, we've had a problem with vegetable thieves. What? Michael seemed confused by my father's sudden statement. We installed security cameras with night vision around the house. Realizing what that meant, Michael and Stephanie turned pale. My father pulled out his smartphone and showed them an image. It was Michael, caught on camera, tampering with my father's car in the dark of night. As they stared at the phone, Michael and Stephanie froze. Michael, realizing the situation, tried to make excuses. Well, it's not like I was doing anything. And here you are, safe at home. He stammered, eyes darting around. I only noticed it recently because I was focused on the vegetable thieves. What? What do you mean? It's too late. If only I had noticed this footage earlier. Shaking his head, my father sighed deeply. Behind him, my mother began to cry, covering her face with both hands. What? What's going on? Michael's voice trembled with confusion. There were several calls from your mother on your phone. 
What? Panic. Michael turned on his heel and rushed into the house. We followed him into the living room as he grabbed his phone to check it. His hands were shaking as he looked at the screen. Peeking over his shoulder, I saw dozens of missed calls from Michelle. What? What is this? All these calls. Michael, what's going on? What happened? Stephanie, growing anxious, put the child down and grabbed Michael's arm. Hey, Michael. I don't know. Michael roughly shook off Stephanie's hand. He tried to call back, but his hands were trembling too much to tap the screen properly. Damn it. Damn it. Frustrated, Michael kept trying to tap the screen, cursing under his breath. Did you clearly see the license plate and confirm it was my car? At my father's question, Michael's head shot up, then quickly averted his gaze. No, I don't know your car's license plate. Then do you know what car your father is driving right now? No way. It can't be. I was surprised too to find out they had the same make and model and the same color. Peter and Michelle came over yesterday to celebrate their first grandchild and stay the night. You didn't even notice because you didn't care. But it's been a month since our baby was born. I tapped Michael's phone screen with my finger. Pale, Michael put the phone to his ear with a trembling hand. Michael, what have you been doing? I called you so many times, so many times. On the other end of the line, Michelle's tearful voice was loud. Mom. Before Michelle could explain what happened, Michael was already in tears. That makes sense. He knew better than anyone what had happened. He had tampered with the car late at night. Knowing exactly what he had done and the condition he left the car in. The brakes suddenly failed. No way. I only had minor injuries, but your father. No way. No way. Until the end, he was calling your name. At Michelle's words, Michael dropped the phone and collapsed to his knees. No way. He clutched his head, fell to the floor, and broke down in tears. Why did dad have to suffer like this? No, this isn't right. I, I didn't mean for this to happen. That's right. You didn't mean for this to happen. You intended to have us in an accident. I looked down at Michael with cold eyes as he lifted his face. What did you say? Didn't you say it yourself when you first saw me? Oh, you're still alive. Tears welled up in Michael's eyes again as he looked up at me. Still sitting, he started crying loudly like a child. If I had known this would happen, I would have shown him a grandson earlier. He was so excited about having an heir. A grandson? Which child are you talking about? My words stopped Michael's crying immediately. His tear-filled eyes turned angry and widened. Don't be ridiculous. I'm talking about the child Stephanie gave birth to. Unlike you, who could only have a girl. Stephanie gave us an heir. Two years ago. That's right, Yasmin. What are you talking about at a time like this? Stephanie knelt beside Michael, placing her hands on his shoulder and arm to support him. Watching this, I couldn't help but laugh through my nose. What's so funny? Stephanie was already acting like she was Michael's wife. That alone was laughable enough. Because, what are you talking about, Stephanie? That child isn't Michael's, right? What? What? I handed the baby to my mother and took out my smartphone. I showed them the pictures my high school friend had sent me. I've known about your affair for months. What? I smiled brightly at the two of them, 
who were now frozen. I had a detective investigate thoroughly. Yes, thoroughly. I took a few photos from an envelope and showed them. They showed Stephanie with a man I didn't recognize. It wasn't the man she had an affair with in college, but another man. Stephanie, you really like married men, don't you? What? Why do you have pictures of me with him? I told you, didn't I? I had a detective investigate thoroughly. It took months, but they found out a lot. Hearing our conversation, Michael muttered, What? Under his breath. I also know you've been receiving child support from this man. How do you know that? Stephanie covered her mouth with both hands. But it was too late. Michael stood up and grabbed Stephanie's arm. You tricked me. He shook her roughly, demanding an answer. Did you trick me? What? What are you talking about? You kept saying how he looks just like you. It's hilarious. What the hell? Watching Michael's anger at being deceived made me laugh. Michael, you can't really be mad at Stephanie, can you? What? Because when I got pregnant, you were really happy, right? That's because you didn't plan to marry Stephanie, right? If my baby hadn't been said to be a girl, you would have continued our married life, wouldn't you? What? You said you were getting divorced. Was that a lie? Shut up. Oh, really? But Stephanie, didn't you think it was strange? It's been two years since your son was born. If Michael intended to divorce me, it would have happened by that time. Michael called you stupid for dropping out of college. Maybe he didn't want to marry you for real. What? Is that true, Michael? Yeah, it is. Who would want to marry a woman who dropped out of college because of an affair? The only reason I thought of marrying you was because Yasmin's child was a girl. What? You jerk. In the midst of the ugly shouting between the two, Stephanie's child clung to my mother they had just met today, while my baby, being held by my mother, started crying loudly. I took my baby from my mother, who then picked up Stephanie's child. There, there, it's okay. Mommy will protect you, Jack. Michael's shouting stopped instantly, and he looked nervously at the baby in my arms. Jack, you said? Yes, that's right. In reality, I had given birth to a boy. At four months, they said it was a girl, but at six months, it was clear it was a boy. Why didn't you tell me? Why would I? You treated me differently based on the baby's gender. I didn't want to tell you. I had stopped Michael's parents from contacting him on the day of the birth for this reason. I couldn't let Michael know it was a boy before the divorce papers were filed. If he knew, he would have resisted the divorce, potentially tearing up the papers and prolonging the process. I wanted to avoid such a situation. I looked Michael straight in the eye and replied in a low voice. Gender doesn't matter. There's no difference in how much I love my baby. Ignoring my words, Michael kept staring at Jack and laughed. Let's start over with this child. He's the true heir of our family. I sighed and said, Hey, do you even understand what you've done? Besides, we're no longer married. I filed the divorce papers I found in your bag. What? But he's my son, isn't he? Turning away from Michael, I shielded Jack. I'm glad. At least this child won't be the son of a criminal. Michael froze as if cold water had been poured over him. That's right. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry for being a foolish son. At my words, Michael's spirit broke. He remained crouched, repeatedly apologizing to his father and crying with regret. Really, you turned out to be such a worthless person. A stern voice spoke, and Michael looked up. Standing at the living room door were Michael's parents. 
Dad, Mom, why are you here? That morning, when my father checked the security camera, he saw Michael tampering with the car. He immediately called a mechanic he knew, showed him the footage, and had the car inspected. The reason it took until evening to return home was because the discovered brake issues had to be fixed. You idiot son. Peter grabbed Michael by the collar and punched him. Stephanie screamed and jumped back. If something had happened to Yasmin, her parents, or the baby, you could never make up for it, even with your life. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Michael cried and apologized, repeatedly muttering, I'm glad you're alive, I'm glad you're alive, through tears and a runny nose. In the end, Michael and Stephanie got on their knees and apologized to me, my parents, and Michael's parents. They even rubbed their foreheads on the floor until they turned red to thank my father for preventing the accident. After divorcing Michael, I now live with my parents and son at my parents' house. Michael, having truly reflected on his actions, pays alimony and child support regularly. He still contacts me every few days, saying he wants to start over. He seems lonely coming home to a dark, empty house, but it's his own fault. He should be grateful he's not in jail. Of course, I have no intention of reconciling, so I keep my responses short and cold. However, it's different with Michael's parents. They often visit with lots of gifts for Jack and shower him with love. Jack seems to love Michael's parents just as much as my own, laughing joyfully whenever they visit. As for my sister Stephanie, she disappeared again with her child after that incident. But it seems she has been secretly contacting our mother. Take responsibility as a mother. Our mother scolds her, and Stephanie falls silent, sulking. And make sure to come home occasionally and show us that you both are well. Our mother says, and Stephanie apparently cries quietly on the other end of the line. To us, Stephanie's child is also a precious family member. We hope that at the very least, the child grows up happy.